Hi, my name is Carl Rüttefalk. I will, in a series of movies, show you how to use Sigma Photo Pro 4.1. Um, now, I'm on a Mac environment, but the program itself works exactly the same on a PC as well. Okay, so let's get started here. The first thing that will come up is a browser. In the browser, you can move files from folder to folder just by dragging and dropping. Uh, in here, you also have the possibility to, for example, change the orientation of a file, like that. Or, for example, play a slideshow, print, put the flag and mark on the picture, delete, and such. Uh, you can also, from this place, save images. So if I, for example, mark a couple here, I could take save as, you have the possibility to mark, to save with all the settings that is included in each file. But I will go into this in detail later. Alright, so in this first video I want to show you uh, yeah, show you one of the shots. We will start with the flag ones. So I will only show the flag ones, otherwise I will be so distracted. So I will start with this one. This is one of the absolutely first pictures that I took with the ST15 and I was more or less blown away by the quality that I saw on the screen. I'm used to a very tiny screen on the ST14, but the ST15 comes with a huge LCD and it was like, wow, when I saw it. So, here we have the first shot. This is taken with the 18 to 50 lens by Sigma, the macro version, and it's really, really nice. But the starting point here is not like the perfect one, so together we will now uh, sort of fix this picture so it looks better. Okay, first of all, you have a lot of small options here. For example, you can zoom in and out in a picture like this. And uh, that's a good thing that you get closer because when you do the sharpness, for example, and add sharpness to a picture, it's really good to be close to so see what happens because you don't want to become too over sharpened, right? Especially Sigma files, they are pretty sharp to start with. So sometimes you even have to go the other way. But this is something you decide and it's your taste that matters. Okay, so here we have a lot of options. For example, you can press the auto button. The auto button will give you a suggestion from SPP on what this picture could look like. You press it. In this case, it did a pretty bad job, so we will not use that. But normally that could be a good starting point for you. Um, we also have something called X3F here. This is the saved settings that somebody used before you. Could be yourself or somebody that had the raw file before you. We press this one and the settings here is the ones... Yeah, I haven't even touched this file before so it will look pretty... Yeah, straight out from camera. Now I'd like to change the settings in this picture and make the colors look better. In order to do that, I will go into the white balance. It now says shade. And I think shade is okay, but overcast is more likely because there's no sunlight in the picture. I can see that in the background. So this is a shade situation. Now I mean an overcast situation. So now the picture looks much better, but I still think that it has a sort of, it's not perfect. So I will click this button here. This is the color picker. So when you click this one and click somewhere, you should click somewhere where it should be white or gray or something neutral. The shade should be, yeah, neutral. So if I click here, this is asphalt. And I guess it's more gray than the rest in the picture. So I start there. And I think that by clicking here a couple of times, I can see if there's some place that is more neutral than other. And I can also keep my eye here on the color wheel. The color wheel is showing you where the colors are at the moment. And if you want to push the colors towards the blue, that will bring you more separation in the colors. But it can also bring a little bit too bluish feeling to the picture. So perhaps something like this is uh, good for this this shot. Okay, so now I'm pretty satisfied here. Actually, I didn't need to do anything here. Uh, the exposure is correct. I don't need to add more contrast. I can see here on the histogram 
that the histogram goes from the top to the bottom. So this is fairly good exposure. And uh, if you expose right from the start using the camera, you will not need to deal a lot with these settings at all. So here I think the next thing to do actually is to save the shot. You save by clicking save image as. In here you will have this one unchecked to start with. By checking this one you will have all the settings that you've done included in the raw file. This means you can later go back to the same file and have the adjustments that you made before. This is very very useful. Okay so in this case I will save it for web so I will save it as a JPEG and sRGB. If you save for web then sRGB is the best choice. If you want to use the picture later for, for example in the press for you send it to a newspaper or something like that then perhaps Adobe RGB or any other others would be a better choice. Uh, that way you will have slightly more colors and that's more suitable for the press and images on print. But for the internet, this sRGB, always pick sRGB, otherwise your pictures will look slightly pale and that's not as fun, right? So sRGB for internet pictures. So for my website for example, almost all my pictures, all, not almost, all pictures are in sRGB. All right, that is only the same. This is JPEG right now. Okay, so this was the look at the first picture. In the next video, I will go through the second one, which is this one, slightly overexposed. Let's see how we can save that one. Thank you.